the LRS 150-48 will work with either 120 or 240 volts mains power. The supply is adjustable slightly up or down from the 48 volts nominal rating that the manufacturer gives the supply. The output current is rated at 3.3 amperes, but since we only need about 2 amperes, this is more than sufficient to operate our system. The power supply has a terminal strip with screw terminals which makes for convenient adjustment. There is a line input, a neutral input, these are for the AC mains, and an earth or ground terminal. The output then is fed to four connections here. These two are both tied together. They are the negative output from the supply. These two are connected together. They are the positive output of the supply. Having four terminals for the output makes it very convenient when you're assembling the supply because you can put the protective diode across one set of connections and the load connections on the other two terminals. There is a small screwdriver adjustment pot, visible right here, that is used to adjust the output voltage of the power supply. It has a Phillips head screwdriver slot in it, but it's very difficult to find a screwdriver that fits it exactly. However, a small flat blade screwdriver fits it very, very well and allows for easy adjustment of the supply. Next, we'll take the supply apart and see how it's made internally. Before we open the power supply itself, let's take a look at some of the external features. First of all, the case has got lots of holes in it to allow air flow through the case for proper cooling. The supply can be mounted either flat or vertically in this position. I prefer this position because the bottom of the case is actually used as a heat sink for the uh, power supply. There are two parts that are heat sink. One is a switching transistor which is fastened in this area here. The other one is a rectifier diode which is fastened over here. So mounting the power supply vertically allows for the largest amount of heat dissipating area in the rear. Mounting it vertically is easy. There is a screw slot here and on the other end of the supply there is another screw hole right here where you can put a mounting screw. If you're mounting it flat then there is a mounting hole right here on this side of the supply and another slot here for a screw to go through to fasten it down. So you can fasten it in either direction that you want to to use the supply. The case itself is rather interesting. The cover is one piece and it's held on with one single screw. A number of little latches hold it in place. So we'll remove the single screw that holds the case on and this comes off by sliding it forward or backwards this way then it simply lifts off and this disengages from the edge and now the single piece cover is off. Let's take a look at the parts layout on the circuit board. The AC line connection is here for the mains. We come in through a small fuse right here which is supposedly replaceable, at least it says so up here that, that you can put in a new fuse. There is a transient voltage suppressor connected directly across the AC mains and then an X2 filter capacitor connected across the AC mains for noise suppression. There's another bypass capacitor between ground and the power input for more noise suppression followed by a common mode filter choke to prov uh, provide additional noise suppression and another filter capacitor across the output. So these people are fairly serious about keeping noise from the power supply from getting back into the AC mains and likewise noise from the mains from getting into the power supply. There are also some additional capacitors here which are used for high frequency noise filtering. Following all of this is a full wave bridge rectifier and two surge current limiting resistors in series here. Then there are two additional transient voltage suppressors on the output of the rectifier circuit which go to then to the two filter capacitors which are the main energy storage capacitors and additionally down here in this tucked down under here is another transient voltage suppressor diode this little black diode which is connected in the circuit. Remember I mentioned there was a switch on here to allow you to select the mains voltage. Well here it is. It's a little slide switch. You can access it from the outside without taking the cover off. A small screwdriver will allow you to switch between 115 volt operation or 230 volt operation depending on what your main service is. 
The filtered DC from the energy storage capacitors is switched into this transformer, which is neatly wrapped up for protection, by a switching transistor, which is located under this silicone rubber cover. And it is uh, held against the heat sink by this mounting clamp, which we'll remove after a while. After passing through the transformer, the energy is then rectified by the rectifier diode, which is attached to the heat sink by this clamp right here. The energy is filtered by these two filter capacitors and then is fed through a choke, a little noise suppression choke here, and another filter capacitor before it is sent to the output terminals of the amplifier. You notice there are additional positions here for filter capacitors to be added on the circuit board. I imagine those are used for power supplies that operate at different voltage and current levels because this same form factor is used for several different power supplies in this same series. There's a couple of blobs of silicone rubber on the board here. I don't know whether that covers up something underneath the board or whether it's just to ensure that this transformer is held firmly in place. The feedback from the secondary side, the low voltage side to the high voltage side, is handled by a pair of opto isolators, which cross over cuts in slots in the circuit board. You can see there are several slots in the board. These slots are for isolation to prevent creepage leakage of any voltage from the mains side of the board into the output side of the board. Obviously, that's done for protection of the circuitry and also safety of the user as well. Uh, I forgot to mention one little thing. Next to the voltage adjustment potentiometer is a small green LED which illuminates when the power is coming out of the power supply to let you know that it's working. So that's a quick, uh, quick useful item for us since we'll be using several of these in series. Should a failure occur, you should be able to identify it immediately by looking at the power supplies and seeing which one has uh, the lights not lit. That will be the one that is uh, in trouble. Now let's take it apart and see what's underneath the circuit board. To do this we have to loosen two screws. This one here which clamps the rectifier onto the circuit board. We'll loosen it up. Well, We have to take it all the way off it looks like. Screws are held on by sealer compound, which prevents them from backing out. You can see it here, the green compound that's on here. Just locks them in place. Take that screw out. Now we have to do the same thing. Remove the screw that holds the switching transistor in place. And we'll be careful when we take this off so we don't mess up the arrangement or the heat sink setup. Okay, all right. There's one more screw that holds the power supply together. It's located right down here. We'll loosen that one. Turn it over, it falls out. Now, the circuit board should come out. Yes, it does. It lifts neatly away. And we can see underneath the circuit board, there is an insulating strip that's placed down here to insulate the bottom of the circuit board from the metal chassis. That's a good idea. A lot of power supplies don't bother to do that. What do we have underneath it? Well, there's some active components. To start with right here, you can see the switching control logic that drives the switching circuit. Um, there are positions for other components as well. Some are used, some are not. It just depends upon what the particular power supply is set up for, what particular parts will be installed. Here you can clearly see the cutouts in the circuit board where the uh, isolation is for the primary to secondary isolation. Notice also here there's a little interesting little thing that looks like a little tooth. It's a spark gap designed so that if a surge occurs, say for instance lightning or something like that that generates a very high voltage pulse, it will be shorted across and bypass the ground to hopefully prevent blowing up the power supply. Well, what do we have under here? Let's carefully remove this rubber cover, if we can, from the transistor. Uh, 
Okay, it's got heat sink on it too, heat compound. I can't read the identifying part number on it, but it is probably a MOSFET, a switching MOSFET of some sort. All right, we'll put that back. The other one is a rectifier diode. You know, so I can see that it's a rectifier diode. Uh, both of these are plastic case devices, which provides reasonably good high voltage insulation by itself, but then by putting them in these protective silicone rubber sleeves, this provides even additional protection against an accidental short circuit. And just as a point of interest, looking under here at the circuit board where this potting compound is, there's nothing underneath there. And on the other side here, there's nothing underneath there. So they're not hiding any components that I can see um, in the circuit board. They're just uh, simply using that to hold the transformer firmly in place. Although it is mounted by the pins which are soldered to the board because the transformer is fairly heavy, if the power supply gets accidentally dropped, they don't want the transformer to tear loose from it. So, looks like a good little power supply. Reasonably well made, lots of filtering, good high quality components in here. There's nothing uh, cheap that I see. The uh, electrolytic uh, capacitors are rated for 105 degrees centigrade, which is good. Uh, should be much, much higher uh, temperature rating than the power supply will ever be exposed to. So to sum it up, it looks as though the Meanwell LRS-150-48 power supply will be a usable power supply for our Rife systems. In another video, I'll do a build showing three of these supplies being assembled into a 150 volt power pack. Then I'll connect it to an SPA5 amplifier and give it a full test. I'll let you know how that goes in another video. If you like this video, please subscribe and remember to give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. We'd appreciate it. Until next time, have a nice day.